An ironic dream of common language for women in the integrated circuit. Donna Haraway's A Cyborg Manifesto, Science, Technology, and Socialist Feminism in the Late 20th Century. Page uh, 149 through 181 from Simeon's Cyborgs and Women, The Reinvention of Nature. This chapter is an effort to build an ironic political myth faithful to feminism, socialism, and materialism, perhaps more faithful as blasphemy is faithful than as reverent worship and identification. Blasphemy has always seemed to require taking things very seriously. I know no better stance to adopt from within the secular religious evangelical traditions of United States politics including the politics of socialist feminism. Blasphemy protects one from the moral majority within, while still insisting on the need for community. Blasphemy is not apostasy. Apostasy. I better look that up later. Irony is about contradictions that do not resolve into larger holes, even dialectically. That's actually said correctly, about the tension of holding incompatible things together because both or all are necessary and true. Irony is about humor and serious play. It is also a rhetorical strategy and a political method, one I would like to see more honored within socialist feminism. At the center of my ironic faith, my blasphemy, is the image of the cyborg. The cyborg is a cybernetic organism, a hybrid of machine and organism, a creature of social reality as well as a creature of fiction. Social reality is lived social relations, our most important political construction, a world-changing fiction. The international women's movements have constructed women's experience as well as uncovered or discovered this crucial collective object. This experience is a fiction and fact of the most crucial political kind. Liberation rests on the construction of the consciousness, the imaginative apprehension of oppression, and so of possibility. That made no sense. The cyborg is a matter of fiction and lived experience that changes what counts as women's experience in the late 20th century. This is a struggle over life and death, but the boundary between science fiction and social reality is an optical illusion. Contemporary science fiction is full of cyborgs, creatures simultaneously animal and machine, who populate worlds ambiguously natural and crafted. Then, page 150. Modern medicine is also full of cyborgs, a couplings between organism and machine, each conceived as coded devices in an intimacy and with the power that was not generated in the history of sexuality. Cyborg sex restores some of the lovely replicative baroque of ferns and invertebrates, such nice organic prophylactics, prophylactics against heterosexism. Cyborg replication is uncoupled from organic reproduction. Modern production seems like a dream of cyborg colonization work, a dream that makes the na nightmare of Taylorism seem idyllic. And modern war is a cyborg orgy, coded by C3I, a command control communication intelligence, an $84 billion item in 1984's U.S. defense budget. I am making an argument for the cyborg. Borg as a fiction mapping our social and bodily reality as an, and as an imaginative resource suggesting some very fruitful couplings. Michael Foucault's biopol biopolitics is a flaccid premonition of cyber politics, a very open fear, uh, field. This doesn't even make any sense to me. By the late 20th century, our time, a mythic time, we are all chimeras, theorized and fabricated hybrids of machine and organism. In short, we are cyborgs. This cyborg 
is our ontology. It gives us our politics. Oh, I see. This one has typos. The cyborg is a condensed image of both imagination and maternal reality. The two joined centers structuring any possibility of historical transformation. In the traditions of Western science and politics, the tradition of racist, male-dominant capitalism, the tradition of progress, the tradition of the appropriation of nature as a resource for the productions of culture, the tradition of reproduction of the self from the reflections of the other, the relation between organism and machine has been a border war. The stakes in the border war have been the territories of production, reproduction, and imagination. This chapter is an argument for pleasure and the confusion of boundaries and for the responsibility in their construction. It is also an effort to contribute to socialist feminist culture and theory in a postmodernist, non naturalist mode and in the utopian tradition of imagining a world without gender, which is perhaps a world without genesis, but perhaps maybe also a world without ends. The cyborg incarnation is outside salvation history, nor does it mark time on an adipital a, a calendar. <sighs> Attempting to heal the terrible cleavages of gender in oral symbiotic utopia or, po or post -adip -adip oh, oh God. Ap apocalypse. <sighs> Man, it's so late. As though Sophulius argues in her unpublished manuscript on Jacques Lacan, Melanie Klein, and nuclear culture, Lacan, the most terrible and perhaps the most promising monsters in cyber worlds are embodied in non adipital narratives with a different logic of expression, which we need to understand for our survival. The cyber is a creature in a post-gender world. It has no truck with bisexuality, creditable symbiosis, unalienated labor, or other seductions to organic wholeness through a final appropriation of all the powers of the parts into a higher unity. In a sense, the cyborg has no origin story in the western sense. A final irony, since the cyborg is also the awful apocalyptic telos of the west's escalating dominations of abstract individual individuation. An ultimate self, united from a last of all dependency, a man in space. An origin story in the Western, human is seen, depends on the myth of original unity, fullness, bliss, and terror, represented by the phallic mother whom all humans must separate. The task of individual development and of history, the twin potent myths inscribed most powerfully for us in psychoanalysis and Marxism. Hillary Klein has argued that both Marxism and psychoanalysis, in their concepts of labor and individualization, individual, individualization and gender formation, depend on the plot of original unity out of which difference must be produced and enlisted in a drama of escalating domination of women slash nature. The cyborg skips the step of original unity of identification with nature in the western sense. This is its illegitimate promise that it might lead to subversion of its teleology as Star Wars. I'm gonna leave it at that. Basically this is what I've been reading uh, all day I'm sorry that <laughs> uh, is, is that, was that awkward enough for you. Uh, basically, this is what I've been doing all day. It's been a very busy day. I'm still working on ordering a computer. I'm reading Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto. Um, this is actually not all of it. I've only read about I've only read to you maybe about 15, 20 percent of it. I got to read the rest of it myself. I am not putting you through all of that. But I did want to put something up today that may or may not be entertaining to you. There you have it. There is a small passage from Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto. An, ir an ironic dream of a common language for the women in the integrated circuit. I'm reading this for 
a certain uh, English class right now in college as I make my way towards becoming a lawyer. <clears throat> to be honest, I don't know anything about what this thing is saying, nor do I completely understand what it's saying. It has a lot of run-on sentences. I'm sure you could realize this as well. But uh, that's enough of that. I just want to let you know that I'm actually still here. Things are going okay. I have, I'm have. i getting a little desperate. Uh, I did not expect to be without a higher-end computer for this long. I had a lot of plans, and those plans just kind of fell apart as, uh, as school came around the corner and I had less time to organize things. This computer should have been here like last year in the summer, but you know, it, it's going to happen. It will happen. So there you have it. Haraway Cyborg Manifesto. Have a good night, everyone.